Three Sons. Starring Fred McMurray. And as Uncle Charlie, William Demarest. A vacation with a beef? No, it, it isn't a beef, Uncle Charlie. Oh, yeah, well, what's wrong with Katie? Oh, Uncle Charlie, Katie, what's wrong? Well, if you'll ask me, Katie doesn't want to go to Mexico and leave her kids here. Yeah. Well, we're taking the plane, and you'll thank me later. Now, take it easy, Katie. You ain't exactly dropping your kids on somebody's snowy doorstep. Katie. Now, you know we'll take good care of them. Sure, the little bums will love a week with good old Uncle Charlie. You ever get the feeling you're cheering somebody down? Look at these kids have more equipment than the Wrigley brothers. <laughs> Honey, relax. Everything is going to be fine. Uncle Charlie, who's taking us to the airport? Me, Chip, Ernie, and Dodie. You think she'll make it? Katie, Mexico will be so much fun, and, and the boys won't be any trouble for us. Yeah, and Dodie's tonsils are better, so you won't have germs to bug you. I know it. I'm gonna have a week with nothing to do. Lie in the sun and shop in Mexico. <laughs> well, I guess Katie and Rob are in Mexico by now. Yeah, sorry you missed the big scene at the airport, Barbara. Tourists in funny shirts and hats and cameras and jokes and happy faces all over the place. Except for the two people crying. Two people crying? Yeah. A little boy who spilled root beer on his mother and Katie. <laughs> I'm doorbell monitor. Hey, Barbara, I want to ask you something, and I want you to level with me. Well, of course I will. What is it? Now, uh, forget the wrinkles, and uh, tell me. Who does this guy look like? It's an amazing resemblance. You hear that? <laughs> You're gonna be a good-looking little guy. <laughs> you. Hello, Doctor. Well, hello, Tony. How are you? Fine. The triplets are here. Yes, I know, dear. Katie called me seven times about it. <laughs> No, no, not today. I just want to take a look at those tonsils. They're weller. Really? Open up wide. Uh, uh -huh. Aren't they weller? They're in perfect shape, dear. Well, hello, Doctor. Hi. Well, if it ain't the king of the tongue, you precious. You here on official business or just goofing around? No. I want to take a look at Dodie's tonsils. Oh, everything is in order for the party we discussed. Why, is somebody throwing a party? Oh, you know the kind of party, Charlie, the kind they have in the hospitals. Can I go? Well, of course you can, Dodie. In fact, it's in your honor. Oh, I get it. So do I, and I'm not going. <laughs> Dodie. Nuh-uh. They're going to cut off my tonsils. <laughs> now, you won't feel a thing, Dodie. You'll be sound asleep. People reach into my throat when I'm asleep wakes me up. <laughs> Honey, how would it be if Mommy came and spent the night with you? That can be arranged, can it? Well, it happens all the time. Well, what time is this party coming off? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, so soon? Well, hospital beds are hard to come by. We have to take them when we can get them. Well, I know, but... Well, maybe we'd better postpone it. See, I'm watching the triplets, and well, I now, could... look, there's no sweat in that department, Barbara. I'll look after them. 
Thanks a lot, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> Sweetheart, do you know that when a little girl has her tonsils out, that she can have any flavor ice cream that she wants? Any flavor? Absolutely. In the whole world? In the whole world. Then that means it's really gonna hurt. <laughs> Honey, when you come home late from work, you're just going to have to expect a lot of big decisions. Well, Barb, I just think that, uh, well, if Dr. Conlon says hospital beds are so hard to come by and he can get one now... But Dodie's so scared. Even when I told her I'd spend the night in the hospital with her, it didn't seem to help. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi. I heard a little voice, so I knew you were home, Daddy. Oh, you did, huh? Uh, Dodie, your mommy and I were just talking about your little trip to the hospital. That's what Myrtle and me wanted to talk about. Oh, will you and uh, Myrtle go right ahead? Mama, Myrtle wants to know if I can talk to Daddy alone. Oh, um, well, Myrtle, um, I'll go upstairs and do some sewing. Well, now, uh, what's on your mind, Dodie? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Myrtle, uh, what's on your mind? Her knees are shaking. <laughs> well, they are. Uh, any special reason? You know, Dad. The hospital. Oh, I see. She's just like Mama. She's scared of spiders and mouses and icky stuff. <laughs> Well, you tell Myrtle she shouldn't be scared because your mommy will be right there with her all the time. She already knows that. You mean she wouldn't feel safe even though mommy's there? Myrtle wants to know if you could stay with us at the you-know-where. If I could? Well, Dodie, uh, it's usually mothers who stay. She's saying please. All right, Dodie, uh, you tell Myrtle that uh, it's very nice of her to want me, and uh, I'll be glad to stay with her. Look, she's smiling. How about that? Uh, hi. Oh, well, how did your private conversation go? Oh, uh, fine, fine. The uh, boys give you any trouble? Uh, no, they were as good as gold. Oh, what did you two talk about? Oh, uh, well, we talked about Myrtle, mostly. The Myrtle? Now, did you know Myrtle's a very timid puppet? No. Uh, but I do know a mother who's dying of curiosity. <laughs> what did she say to you? Well, she said, uh, is it true you're afraid of spiders and mouses and icky stuff? Yes, of course it is, just like any other sensible woman. <laughs> Honey, are you beating around the bush? Yeah. You see, Barbara, this is a little difficult to tell you, but... Uh, well, it seems Dodie would rather have me stay at the hospital than you. Now, honey, it isn't that she's rejecting you exactly. Well, of course it is. And she's accepting you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Honey, didn't I tell you you'd relax? Mm hmm. Wonderful. Isn't it amazing what a change of scene can do for your outlook? Oh, Rob, look. She brought her baby. Why couldn't we bring ours? Katie, you said we wouldn't talk about home. I know. Well, I hope they're all right. They're fine, honey. Come on. Okay, let's go. And this is your room, Miss Douglas. Well, it's a nice room, isn't it, Dodie? Hospital smells scary. Perhaps I should take your little friend. Mm, little scared. Well, 
Well, maybe in that case, you'd better stay with her, so you can tell her there's nothing to be frightened of. <laughs> Thank you. How come Daddy isn't here? Oh, honey, he'll be here soon. That's the part that seems forever. Not exactly over the hill, Junior. Yeah, but their lives aren't so hung up with problems. What's so tough about the life you got? Are you kidding? I owe a $4 library fine. Brenda Raderman thinks I've got a dumb face. I forgot the combination to my gym locker. Hey, wait a minute, Ernie. You better take a look at little Charlie. See if he looks a little weird. Careful how you answer that. That kid bears a strong resemblance to yours truly. <laughs> Yeah, I think he does look a little weird, Chip. What are you trying to start, Chip? There's nothing wrong with those kids. They're the picture of health. I guess you're right, Uncle Charlie. Oh, look at it. Huh? Those kids are the picture of... Hospital gowns are made that way. I wonder what's keeping Daddy. Maybe he's got scared and he's not coming. Or maybe he's at home watching TV, not even caring. Oh, sweetheart. Thank you, nurse. Steve! Daddy, what happened? Well, I was late leaving the office, so I uh, ran down the stairs to the parking lot, and I missed the last step. Did you break it? No, no. Well, the uh, doctor at the plant took a quick x-ray and it's just a sprain, but he thought I'd better use these for a while. Did you cry? No, Dodie, I was very brave. Oh, Steve. Now, honey, don't worry, it's just a sprain. Luckily, it was my left foot so I could still drive. Well, then you can't stay here tonight. Well, I can't think of a better place to rest a foot than in a hospital, can you? I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over. Orthopedic patients belong on the fourth floor, sir. Oh, I'm not a patient. I'm Mr. Douglas. I'm going to spend the night with my little daughter. Oh, with a, a broken leg? Well, it's just a sprain. Oh, I see. Well, then, Mrs. Douglas, I'm afraid it's time for you to go. Oh, all right. Well, now, Dodie, you be a good girl for Daddy. And tomorrow, it'll be all over. Who will be all over? Uh, Dodie, uh, Mommy just means your tonsils will be all gone in the morning. And then you'll be finished. What do you mean, finished? I'm only seven. Uh, Barbara, we'll get along just fine. Okay. Goodbye, love. Goodbye. Uh, you, uh, you sure now that uh, you'll be okay? Ah, uh, we'll be fine. Okay. Don't worry. Bye-bye. Uh, good luck. Bye, Mama. You know what, Daddy? What, honey? I'm sure glad you're here, because I would be scared. Well, I'm glad I'm here, too. I probably got you out here on a false alarm, Doc. <laughs> it's all right, Charlie. I'm glad I had a look. Yeah, well, I don't want you to think that I'm the kind of a guy that comes unglued every time a kid coughs. But look, I can't make a diagnosis, so I called in a pro. Now, tell me, do these kids look weird? Well, I could get technical, Charlie, but in layman's terms, the kids look weird. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Let's not watch cartoons anymore, okay, Daddy? Okay, honey. Might be better if you just stay quiet for a while. Hi there. It's fun time. <laughs> there must be a person on the other side of that puppet. <laughs> and it's me, the welcome lady. And I'm Bernardo the dog. <laughs> and what is your name? And why are you in the hospital? My name's Dodie Douglas, and I'm in the hospital because I'm going to get my tonsils cut out. <laughs> 
Well, now, don't you worry, because tonsils are the easiest things for a doctor to take out. And everybody gets better right away. Isn't that right, Bernardo? Right. And who are you? Are you Dodie's daddy or Dodie's mommy? <laughs> I'm Dodie's daddy. Well, that's good, because your voice is too low for a mommy. <laughs> hey, you got a broken leg. No, it's only a strain. Well, I'm going to bite your nose, and I'm never going to let go. <laughs> Daddy, he's got your nose. Yes, he sure has, and uh, you can let go now, Bernardo. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bernardo and I have to go now. Goodbye, Dodie. Goodbye, Bye. Daddy. Goodbye, Dodie. Goodbye, <laughs> <Hi>, Bernardo. Bye-bye. <laughs> Welcome, lady. Come back again. Yes, uh, I do too, Dodie. Now, now uh, why don't you uh, fly down here and try to get some sleep, huh? Okay, Daddy. Hello. Uh, let's see. Dodie Douglas, Tom select me tomorrow morning. How do you feel, Dodie? Scared. Oh, now don't you worry. I'm going to give you a nice little pill that'll make you very sleepy. Water? Good girl. Now you just slide down. You'll be asleep before you know it. Good girl. Now that... Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but orthopedic patients belong on the, on the fourth, fourth floor. floor. I'm not a patient. I'm Dodie's father, and I'm going to spend the night here with her. With a broken leg? It's just a sprain. Oh, I see. Well, on this floor, I'm afraid it's bedtime. Do you have your pajamas? Yes, I have my pajamas and my toothbrush and my Roman slippers, but uh, it's only 7.30. Uh, I thought I'd turn on the TV softly, maybe. Uh, on this floor, there's no TV after 7.30. Oh. Well, uh, is there anything to read around here? On this floor, the reading matter is mostly Mother Goose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I guess I'll pass. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Want me to teach you some songs? All right, Dodie. Little Sally, wants you is my friend. Think of a better way than this to unwind. Mm. Now it's great. All we have to do is relax and not worry about the babies. Rob, how do we know how the boys are? I mean, we're, we're miles from home and, and, and we're in the middle of a foreign country. Honey, calm down. The boys are just fine. See if I could find something to read. You see, it's only a little after eight, and uh, well, I'm not sleepy, and there seems to be a rule about no TV around here. Do you have a broken foot? Oh, no, no, just a sprain. Oh, that'll be the fourth floor, dear. <laughs> I'm not a patient. I'm the father of the little girl in this room. Uh, could you find me something to read? How does Peter Rabbit grab you? <laughs> I have nothing against Peter, but uh, couldn't you maybe find something a little more adult? I'll see what I can do, but you'll have to get right back into that bed. Yes, ma'am. Hiya, Steve. Don't worry, there's nothing seriously wrong with the kids. 
Charlie. <laughs> oh, hi, Dad. I guess Uncle Charlie already told you why we're here. Chip. Chip? Hey, Dad, I asked Odie. Oh, well, fine. But what's going on with the babies? Don't worry. The doctor just thought they'd be better off in the hospital. I'll be right back. But, but Barbara? Barbara? Steve, what's wrong with your foot? Oh, uh, hi, Dr. Conlon. Uh, it's nothing serious, just a sprain. Uh, tell me, what's wrong with the triplets? Oh, just a respiratory congestion. I could have treated them at home, but with three children and the mother away. Well, it's just a question of keeping expert eyes on them for a day or two. Uh, could I see them? You better not now, Steve, no. I'm going to send the whole family home and then put the babies in a separate nursery. Uh, is there anything I should do? Well, Dodie's tonsils come out pretty early in the morning. I suggest you get some sleep. Sleep? <laughs> sleep. Excuse me, but you must have the wrong room. Orthopedic patients are on the fourth floor. A nurse. Uh, Dr. Conlon just went around the corner. Now, if you'll catch him, he'll explain the whole thing to you. I, uh, I don't think I could go through it again. <laughs> Why didn't somebody wake me up? Oh, well, I didn't have the heart to. And besides, there's no reason for both of us to worry. Well, well it's all over and Dodie's fine. Oh, good. She'll be waking up in a few minutes, but I don't think she'll be doing much talking right away. <laughs> oh, Doctor, I'm so glad it's over. So am I. Uh, now, tell me, Doctor, when can we take her home? Well, I'd like to keep her overnight just to be on the safe side. Then she and the boys can go home tomorrow. Oh, fine. I'll be stopping by the house in a couple of days to check on the whole gang. Goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye. Well, did you have a good rest? Well, I've had better. Frankly, I'll be glad to get out of here. Oh, really? Why? Well... Your daughter will be down in just a few minutes. Aren't you supposed to be on the fourth floor? That's where they treat all bone injuries. Yeah, that's why. If they're worried about me down there, will you tell them I'll be right back? Of course. The fourth floor? Uh, it's a long story. <laughs> yeah, I'll be glad when Robbie and Katie get back so I can get some sleep. You want to be an uncle? <laughs> Mama, my throat's killing me. <sighs> Tony, your tonsils have been out for almost a week. Now, the doctor said the pain was going to subside in a few days. I wish it would quit subsiding and get better. Well, isn't anybody going to notice? Well, look who's here. Look, Ma, no crutches. Well, yes, it's them, Marvin. Still limping a little. Well, we all ought to be glad this week's behind us. Hi. We got home early and we just couldn't wait, so we took a cab. Oh, I am so glad to be home. The babies are upstairs and they're fine. Oh, I can't wait to see them. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I'll go with you. Uh, Dad, how'd everything go? Uh, remarkably. <laughs> remarkably? Uh, you wouldn't want to clarify that. Well, let's just leave it at uh, remarkably. <laughs> I don't know what I was worrying about. They look great. I can't wait to get you home. <laughs> I'll bet you've all grown two inches. Besides, what could have happened? I could have had my tonsils out, that's what. <laughs> but you're fine now, aren't you, Dodie? Yeah, but as soon as they quit subsiding, I felt better. <laughs> Thank you.